watching him during practice a week or two ago, and we were just doing these little snippets, you know, five minutes. You know, each speaker came up and had about five minutes just to get the kinks out. And none of us wanted him to stop talking. <laughs> the other ones, yeah, we were ready for the... No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, one more speaker before the break. We've got some snacks for you that I teased you with before. We got a 15 minute break, but first, we got an amazing speaker, Shane Cooper. Give it up. Yellow hickory. I said yellow because yellow was Vincent Van Gogh's color of hope. And hearing all the talkers today and, and speakers, uh, you know, I hope that your heart and brain gets a little bit yellow today with inspiration. Today, we'll see how this uh, remote's working. Oh, raise your hand if you were made in the USA. <laughs> All right. I would like to share with you the fable of the sock man today. Chapter one. Once upon a time, there was a town called Utopia. And Utopia was famous for making socks and furniture. There lived a man named Ned. Ned was a, a God-fearing family man. Kissed his kids off to school and went to work every day. And uh, he was a sock mechanic. And Ned was a sock man. Utopia at the time was home to a hundred sock mills. Pride Knitting is where Ned worked. And at Pride Knitting, they made socks with love and attention to detail. They were making products that lasted generations. And Ned loved to tinker with the sock machines at Pride Knitting. I See Pennies was where the products were being sold that Ned was making. And at I See Pennies, the socks that were selling were for about $3 a pair. And the products that were being sold, again, all the products would last generations. And value is what was being sold. Value was long-lasting goodness that was created with care and attention to detail. And the utopians cherished this word called value. Cherished it. One dark, dreary day, a store called Jmart opened its doors. It was much bigger, had a lot of stuff in it for sale, but it had less employees. And they could sell their socks for a dollar a pair. And they were going to Pride Knitting and they said, Pride, we would like for you to make socks for us, but Pride couldn't afford to make socks for Jmart. So Pride went to a land far away to make their products. And this far away land would sell socks to Pride and Pride would package them. And so Ned was no longer a sock machine mechanic. He was packing socks. This job paid less than his other job. And the socks were cheaper, too. Oh, boy, then came Wally World. Wally World was even bigger than J-Mart. And they sold socks for cheaper. They were, they were selling socks for 25 cents a pair. And I'm glad that they did because the socks would only last long enough to where you, a, 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 a possum crossing I-40 would last longer than these socks. <laughs> so, over time, slowly the, the sock, mills, uh, sock manufacturing slowly shut down and there were only 20 sock mills left. And Pride Knitting closed its doors and Ned lost his job. And Ned went to sit at home. <coughs> Sitting at home didn't sit well with his wife's pocketbook, 
So Ned went back to work, and he went to work at Wally World, stocking shelves. And the great thing about that was Ned had stocked shelves before, so at least he knew how. And when his toe poked through his sock, he went to Wally World and bought four more pair for a dollar. Chapter 2, A Faraway Land. What the people of Utopia did not know. Their socks were being made with child labor. The far away land was polluting the earth. They had poor labor practices. Poor labor laws. They poisoned the pets of Utopia with pet food. They even sold kids' lunch boxes with toxic chemicals. They painted kids' toys with lead paint, which was poisonous. Even the homes in Utopia had drywall made with radioactive material from faraway lands. Baby food was poisoned and tainted. Now this faraway land it, the pictures that I just showed and the, the, the points that I made, that's not scare tactics. That is absolute truth that's happened in the last six years. And utopians stripped all their jobs. And the products that were coming into utopia would not last. Them. Chapter 3, the copycats. Chapter 3 is talking about what happens in these faraway lands. The brands that Ned made was his brand. And the faraway land took his brand from him. Without his permission, they made products with his brand. Not only products with his brand, but if you look closely at the slide, it says made in the USA. They, this faraway land, government would not help shut down this illegal practice of pirates. In fact, they even used Ned's picture on their website and stole his image. So how can we compete if our competition has no rules? Ned? Remember Ned? Well, after the last utopian sock mill was shut down, Utopia could not afford to pay for the water system that they had for their city and without the businesses to help mitigate the cost. So Ned was forced to pay $10 more a month for his water bill. Blame chapter, th chapter 4. Who do we blame? Do we blame the faraway land? No, we don't blame the faraway land. We should blame ourselves. We have the power to vote with our money. We have the power to ask for American-made products. We have the power to ask for valuable products that have that utopian word value connected to them that will last. Chapter 11. Thank you. The moral of this story. Uh, uh, there we go. This is your town, Hickory. It's not a fable. It's the truth. Sixty cents of each dollar spent locally stays locally. Sixty-eight percent of Americans say U.S. manufacturing helps with national security. 61% of you would buy Made in the USA, if you can. We should demand American alternatives. Let's make socks that last and have that value that we all love and know. Let's make furniture that our kids fight over as, fa as family heirlooms. Made in the USA is not just a tagline, it's our heritage. 
Think global, but act global. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Thank you. We're at the end of session two. We've got one more session to go, but right now you have a break. Go powder your nose and get a snack. We'll see you in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That would be 2.35.